Just across the river from Ground Zero is Atlantic Avenue here, a lovely street with a lot of Arab American businesses. And one of the untold stories uh, after 9-11 was the persecution. Uh, many of them suffered graffiti, taunts, uh, even some destruction of property. People felt threatened here, but it wasn't really reported in the news as people rallied round the flag uh, in the wake of the attacks. But people here do remember. Rumdan Othman runs the Sultan restaurant on the avenue, serving traditional Middle Eastern food. I mean, it was a little tough time for the Arab community during the 9-11. Few incidents happened, you know, and people, uh, there was a loss of life, but uh, there was loss of uh, business. Some people, they burned their business. Some people, they, they burned some mosques in, in the city. The where mosque in the city was burned. Mosque in Brooklyn, I think, was burned partially. A uh, few businesses. The Al Farouk Mosque here on Atlantic Avenue is the centre of the community and became a centre of controversy uh, after uh, the 9 11 attacks. Uh, of course, law enforcement, the FBI, everyone was spooked being caught unawares by the terrorist attack. So, a lot of intelligence activity around mosques like this. But the community did rally round, uh, New Yorkers too. Uh, but it was a difficult atmosphere for a lot of Muslims here. Many Muslims, American citizens, often were spied upon after the Patriot Act vastly expanded powers available to law enforcement. Muslims were pressed into spying on each other, innocuous activities often considered suspicious. Afnam was three years old on 9-11. He has only become a fully practicing Muslim in the last few years. He says his parents tried to warn him off worried about radicalization. Afnan, however, feels no stigma, just his faith. Honestly, when I start, started practicing, my parents thought I became like an extreme person or something. Maybe I got influenced to start practicing and stuff. Because my parents are kind of like, um, weren't too practicing, you know? But right. so, yeah, but you know, not too much. We don't really, we try to stay away from people who are extreme, you know? But the Muslim community here have had other things to worry about over the last two decades. Relatives caught up in the wars unleashed by the U.S. after 9-11, and also relatives trapped in the Syrian and Yemeni civil wars. Also more local concerns. Rapid gentrification of Brooklyn has encouraged many Arab business owners to cash in, sell their properties, and move out. Restaurant tastes have changed too. Focus has shifted from excellent ethnic food to expensive, hip new eateries. And then came COVID-19. Ramdan says his business is down more than 80%, and he doesn't know how his restaurant will survive. COVID will probably kill more Arab-owned businesses here than prejudice, fear, and intimidation ever did. Nathan King, CGTN, on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn.